Hi, this is Linux Beginners Must Know Part 1. This is about three important nice to knows internal commands or built ins, external commands, and the path variable. When you work in the Linux terminal, you're actually running a shell, and you work in that particular shell. And the first commands you will get familiar with is, for example, the cd command to navigate your file system's directory structure so you can cd into the directories you're permitted to enter, like, for example, slash tmp. Another very common command is the ls command to list your files. But what you should know is that the cd command and the ls commands have an important difference. The cd command is what is called a shell built-in, so that's an internal command and is native to the shell. So in other words, it is a function that's available in the shell once the shell gets started. The ls command, however, is located in the user bin directory, so it's not part of the shell and has to be located on disk and then loaded into memory where it will be executed. And once it's listed your files, it will exit again. So every time you run the ls command, it will have to be retrieved from disk. So the cd command is a shell built-in, where the ls command is an external command. Now as you've seen, you can simply type ls and your shell will find it on disk and load it. But how does the shell know where to look for the command, since Linux holds many, many directories, and having to search the entire disk would simply take too long to keep you satisfied? Now, a shell has many variables, which are part of the shell itself, and some of those are set by the shell, and others can be set and modified by the user, so by you. A very important variable for finding commands is the path variable. So if we want to list its contents, we can simply add a dollar sign in front of the uh, variable name and then run echo from the command line. And as we can see in this case, it holds three directories which are separated by a colon. Now this variable gets set when you log in and it does not necessarily only hold these three directories, but very often it holds more than just these three. But anyway, when you run the ls command, which is, as I mentioned, an external command, it will know how to find it. Now if we want to know where the shell will find the command, we can simply run the which command. Which, by the way, is another shell built-in, like the cd command. So when we run which ls, it searches the three directories from the path variable from the left to the right, and will tell you where it will find ls when you run it. OK, now when we empty the path variable like this, and check its contents, we see that it's absolutely empty, so no directories inside. So now when we run which ls, it will tell us that it can't find it anywhere. And if we run it like this, ls will not be found at all any longer. Now, accidentally, we've just seen that it resides in slash user slash bin. So if we simply run user bin ls, we are fine because we tell it where it can find ls. But you may not like that because it's a lot more typing. The cd command still works, however, even though the path variable is empty. And this is because it's internal to the shell. So I suggest we will fill the path variable again with the directories that we uh, once had. And now we are fine, so we can run ls again without telling the shell where to run it from. And finally, if you want to list all shell built-ins, like cd and which, we can run compgen-b to list all built-ins. Or we can run man type, which will also give us an overview of all these built-ins. And if we want to find out whether a command is a built-in or not, we can simply use the type command to find out. So you run type cd and we see it's a built-in, and then we run type ls and it will tell us that's in user bin on disk. So in summary, there are some commands which are built into the shell, and the rest of all the commands can be found on disk, and to find these commands, it will use the path variable. And we're done.